Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam, Rahmatullah. Sayyidi, how do non-Muslims come closer when ignited with the light and love of Islam? How do you come closer? <coughs> like that. <laughs> how to come closer is by following the teachings. That by coming through the YouTube, watching the, the teachings, watching the, the articles, reading the articles, following the app for any type of recitations that they can do. But the, uh, mainly a lot of it is the teachings, that if they come and they listen to the teachings and open their heart into the teachings, then Allah guides whom Allah wants. And the tariqahs are very strong at guidance and, and that light reaching to people. That's why if you go through the comments on these videos then you'll see that how many new people are continuously coming and that they want to take their shahada, that they've never heard these things like this before and become more and more towards the opening. When the world enters into its state of difficulty and mankind is convinced that it's in its last phase of life then you should see people coming in droves to Islam because its answers uh, has its answer for everything and has the immense majestic power from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad But people have to be careful with all of these energies and difficulties until they can reach to that point inshaAllah. Uh, as alaikum Ya Shaykh Walaykum As salaam uh, Forgive me for my ignorance, but can you please tell us about the reality of sense and which sense should we use? Reality of sense, you have to get the timeless reality and the sense of hearing is the most important right now. That's why they're talking tonight about the sense, the sense of hearing, so you have to hear. If we don't hear, all the other sense makes no sense, right? If you don't hear it, you don't hear the reality, you didn't hear the teaching, very small and every, every step of it the shaykh says, do like that, do like this, do like that, do like that. If they don't hear it and you see them not even fulfilling what the shaykh just talked about, then you wonder to yourself that these people have no sense. What else could possibly open if you don't first open your ears? You think the sense of seeing will open without the person having an ear that listens and submits? No, that's only jinn playing with them and making them feel like they're having some sort of a vision. But no, until they reach a state in which samina watana that they're hearing and they hear it every aspect. You know when the shaykh says, make it like this, do it like this, sit like that, do like this, all of those are conditioning. We said before, it's not when the shaykh says, please give me a tafsir of Surah Yaseen, they're looking for the big mission. That's not uh, listening. The listening is in every interaction is the ear actually listening, hearing what he said and doing it as he said. Even you think it's wrong, you still do it. So that to condition yourself to not use your head, not use your head not use your head. So this is not an easy state and they achieve that not by any type of easiness and immense amounts of difficulty. So the more important is the sense of hearing. If we don't accomplish hearing then every other sense is, is nonsense. <laughs> so see before the shaykh would have big gatherings, he would giving big talk. And he would look to one of the, the people, says, go get me some pizzas from my house please. Right in the middle of the talk he would say, you go get some pizzas and take it to the house. And uh, the person just looked, was so upset that he's being called out of an association, he's gonna lose all these secrets and uh, whatever he thought he was able to pick up from these understandings and then go get a pizza. Well, what the heck is, is that kind of an order? And then he reluctantly with huffing and puffing and everybody's watching like, oh my God, you're not going to listen to the shaykh. He reluctantly went and did it 
And when he went then the Mawlana would talk and, and say that, you achieve more by listening than by thinking you're going to sit in a talk. So when an isharat came at that moment, go do that, what he would have achieved by immediately listening would have been more than what he thought he was going to absor absorb with his nafs sitting there on the carpet. Means at that moment it came for him, move and see if they'll move. And what he would have been dressed with is again something he couldn't have comprehended. So this was our, our whole way of teaching and how we were brought up. Now it's just very simple, you can't say anything to anyone because they're going to get angry with you. But that was the reality that this ear doesn't open. And if you tell somebody, don't do that, don't, don't send out emails without my permission, oh they get so angry. Huffing, puffing, huffing, puffing, but there's a hikmah and a wisdom in everything that the shaykhs are teaching. One is a protection for people from hasad, they don't praise people in front of other people because nobody's capable of carrying the hasad. Tomorrow you become crippled and blind and, and all sorts of sicknesses and difficulties and say, oh thank you, you praised me in front of these people, I got sick. So they understand, other people don't understand, the shaykhs understand everything so, but the system is how much we can hear and then how much we can fulfill. That then keeps unlocking, unlocking, unlocking until Prophet is happy with their hearing. Allah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa Sayyidi, could you please elaborate on the tajweed in the Qur'an, the symbols on the words you've spoken before when it's above the letter and below the letter? Yes, no. <laughs> it's a coding, so alhamdulillah. These are a coding from Sayyidina Uthman, Sayyidina Uthman Aqali, Jamil al Qur'an and Majid, the beloved Sayyidina Uthman. Whom Allah gave that gift and that reward that would take and gather the Qur'an which was one immensely amazing and then put all the markings upon it. So then these markings are codings not only for the non-Arab to recite, ooh, wow like they say the vowels but the marking on top it represents a tajalli that this huruf is, is a dress from heavens coming upon that. That huruf and the secret of that kalam, that one word. When it has a line below the huruf, that kalam and that letter is giving a dressing onto earth. So it means it's receiving one on the top, when it's below it it's dressing something upon the earth, upon the reciter, upon the human. When it has the wow, it has a reality from Allah's ancient oceans of wadud. When it has the crown which is to duplicate the sound or to the elongation of a letter but it's actually like a crown and that has to do with the kingdom and sultanat and the letters represent something from the reality of the sultanat of Sayyidina Muhammad so means everything he was coding, he was coding which is immensely miraculous that to put all of these markings and coding it with the Divinely codings. So it means the Holy Companions they're not uh, normal people that from the light of Sayyidina Muhammad Allah took that light and made these four Holy Companions and they carry immense realities and that's why you always see their names orbiting Muhammadun Rasulullah They are the elements that orbit the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah So their station is not something matchable, not even understandable. By loving them they dress us. By loving Sayyidina Usman, Jami al-Qur'an and Majeed then inshaAllah departs within our soul secrets of Holy Qur'an and its realities and its dress. Is that each companion wants to dress us from their secret. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq is guiding then come to Naqshbandiyya, Siddiqiyya because I will dress you from this character, my character, my love, I'm the moon for Sayyidina Muhammad 
So alhamdulillah Allah Zawajal granted us this immense gift by guiding us into Islam, guiding us into Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ya Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi uh, We were reading the timeless reality. Can you please elaborate a bit more on the thumbprint and the shahada finger during meditation? Good job, mashaAllah. We have somebody who read the timeless reality, alhamdulillah. The, the, the thumbprint and the shahada, everything is coded. So Allah describes, we're going to replicate you all the way to the marking upon your thumb. That means that every thumb has unique code for who you are and your shahada finger carries a light from the reality of your soul and Divinely Presence. When that shahada finger is touching the thumb, it's like a barcode scanner, it's scanning your identity and bringing your haqqaiqs and your realities to you. You don't need that all the time. So that's why when they sit for tafakkur then they sit in a way in which to have that barcoding scanned and that nobody notice it and begin to ask for the energy that is their reality to come more to them because they're sitting in a state of meditation and contemplation. They're sitting to know their Lord and to know themselves so they can know their Lord. But doesn't mean going everywhere and putting hand like Buddhist people then all the Muslims come against everybody. They copied and understood it and then they did it differently just to scan for your identity and then you hold it. And that falls upon your reality to come to you inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah uh, forgive me for my ignorance, but how should we prepare for what's coming for us and our families in these days of difficulty? I think we talked last night that uh, there's no way to prepare for Qiyamah, but what you can prepare is for Sayyidina Mahdi And uh, immense, immense events are coming and that requires good character, love and hold firm to the shaykhs. There are 50 shaykhs that will have 50 locations of light upon this earth. They know who their selves are and the light that they spread and the ability that Allah will dress them with for safety and for protection upon this earth. Keeping their love, keeping their companionship, keeping their understandings through all of these immensities and difficulties, keeping the meditation, the muraqabah, all of these are the training for those days. What can somebody do? And then you buy your food, stock your home, keep batteries, food, essential food, crackers, peanut butter, diapers if you have children. All of the essentials like you have a little market, that's why we have an entire market. But everyone else should have like a little market in their home, in their cupboard. As a result Allah's watching, Prophet is watching that this person believes but they have no supplies, mm, they don't really believe. So belief is, is something quantitative, is that the correct word Tawfiq? Yeah, that you can verify. It's not fictional like some people say, oh pray, I pray in my heart and I'm good with God, Dang, that's not true. That everything you can quant, quant what is it called? Quantify, means you can take a quantity out of it. So all are looking and say, okay they have no supplies, what kind of belief is that? Then when you have supplies, say, okay he heard and they actually have supplies. So those are the protections that we put our supplies and Allah make it to last. Then I'm listening to the meditation, I'm doing it, Ya Rabbi grant me this nazar, grant me protection, grant me a light. How light going to come to you, you never sit to do any type of meditation or tafakkur. So then I said, no I'm going to sit, I don't have to be the best one at doing it. But Allah said, take one step, I take 99 steps towards you. And these difficulties that come, that come from all over, people can't imagine from Alaska they'll be attacking through Canada, from Korea they'll be attacking into California, they'll be launching missiles and bombs beyond belief. 
And at that time Allah will give in the hands of awliyaullah to protect their people and they'll be with using all of Allah's uh, might and majesty. So these things will be happening in an instant and people will be taken by surprise when they wake up in the morning it become a new world. So it's a matter of belief and people having good character. When you find people whom are yelling and fighting too much is because demons are trying to overtake them to lose their protection and we can't reiterate that enough and people don't seem to understand it. Everyone feels that their anger is, is eligible or they have a right to their anger, they have a right to be angry and nobody has a right to be angry. Nobody has a right to be angry, only Allah has a right to be angry because only Allah is, is not accountable. But in our time and in our difficulty anyone whom angers and stays within a state of anger and is blocking their connection. So imagine you have an a umbrella of connection and protection and shaitan is stealing it by bad character and the person thinks that their anger is justifiable but you're trying to teach that, uh, it looked like the devil just stole your umbrella right before a missile launches on your head. So means it said, this whole west coast is all under difficulty from that region across the water and it's just a matter of time when Allah give them a sharat and they begin launching what they are going to launch. So these difficulties that are imminent everywhere then it requires their muraqabah, their good character and shaitans are biting at them to become angry and they have to be strong and not angry. Not angry they shouldn't exhibit anger and if they do get angry they wash, they pray, make their salawats and to have good character. The sign of anger and anger staying is that shaitan has took your cover and your protection away. You invoke Allah all you want but apparently if you're angry shaitan is with you not Allah. Allah. People are now having their dreams, they're seeing these, these, these wars in everywhere. They're seeing the bombings that are coming from every direction and, and the difficulties that are coming. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, would you speak more on the uncreated speech of Allah? There is the Arabic we hear of a recitation. Is the uncreated speech the energy behind the sound? <clears throat> the uncreated speech is the ihtiram and the respect that Allah's words are not created. The Qur'an is, a, is Allah's compilation of words that are not created. So something not created is coming in something created that within itself is of a miraculous nature in which Allah is providing its power and its energy to that extent. But to the extent of sound we said before that the Qur'an in the immensity of its power and Allah describes that Sayyhatan Wahidatan that for think four times in Surat Al Yaseen it's but one shout draws our attention that in one shout Allah can decimate and take away all of creation. In one shout Allah can raise all of creation, bring them into a location. So it means that the power of sound was most supreme. That's why from the time of Sayyidina Isa salam and his relationship and reality to Sayyidina Muhammad was a Injil, was a spoken. And then by the time Qur'an comes with the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad it's a recited with a beatific verse, beatific sound and the reality of the note of sounds, the seven qirats up to fourteen means then the power of the sound of Qur'an is something that can't be understood again because of the reality of sound. But 
what was the sound of Sayyidina Muhammad And because we're not capable of understanding that sound, what the Sahabi heard of the holy voice that Prophet heard from Allah's speech and what Sayyidina Muhammad spoke is not something that's even understandable. As a result, the station and purity of the companions is not something that can be achieved. Just by the sound vibration that was hitting them and all their imperfections taken and all their perfections granted. So just the sound of that voice is something that can't be understood. Then the voice of the Sahabi to Tabi'een because they were dressed with a vibration that not achievable. And as a result when they spoke to the companions, their companions, what was that power? That's why the hierarchy of that reality. So they were taking these vibrations from the vibration of Sayyidina Muhammad as a result the prosperity of the nation was highest at those 300 years because they were taking the vibrations and they were pure and sending out those vibrations. As the vibration became weaker and weaker then the nation became in more and more difficulty. By the time they were inheriting they were not at that level as the ones who had come before them and they were not at that frequency as the ones who had come before them. And that's why awliyaullah would go and recite and 200,000 people would come. They would go and they would memorize 600,000 hadiths and un- unimaginable realities. So when they were speaking, they were speaking with a vibration that was purifying and that's why it was like a pyramid. The top of it was Sayyidina Muhammad and then down, down, down they say up to 300 years was the prime of the nation and the vibration and all the immensities of what was coming out from the realities of Qur'an and the realities of Islam. As the vibration became weaker then it became more difficulty until the last days hadith is that the last days will be filled with oppression against Muslims. And companions say, why there will be no Muslims? Say, no there'll be so many but they're hiding. They don't look like Muslims anymore, right? They look like hipsters and gangsters and every type of uh, crook and criminal. So they left Izzatullah, Izzat Rasul. So we have a bunch of Muslim everywhere but they don't look Muslim, they're, they're wearing inappropriate uh, clothing, they're dressed inappropriate, acting inappropriate. So what they have of Islam? They lost the Izzah and might of Allah they lost the izzat of Rasulullah because in reality how Allah can dress you with might and power if not Prophet dressing you first, right? So Prophet has to be happy with you, Allah completes the happiness and says, I'm also happy. Why Allah say, I'm happy with the servant, why am I happy with the servant? No beard, no hat, no sunnah, no ring, no cane, no sunnah prayers, no nothing, why Allah is happy with them? Because they're khushbu, no. So actually the secret of Allah's happiness is that, oh look they are Muhammadiyun. They are the people whom they love Prophet and they're trying to imitate Prophet As a result of their imitation, I'm happy with them Allah dresses that servant. They then have Izzatullah, Izzat Rasul. And then the real mu'mineen as that al-mu'mineen are all around them guiding, teaching them and trying to bless them and protect them. So that has an immense secret that hadith of last days they would be bountiful and everywhere but, but they don't look Muslim. So they lost their might and the key to that kingdom. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon, salaamun al-mursaleen, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. إلى الشرف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى أصحابه الكرام ولا مشايخنا في طريقة نشبندية العالية وسائر وصداتنا وصدقنا الفاتحة. الصناعة.